I bet a lot of you are going to be kind of confused why I'm doing a review of Forrest Gump since, well, I already did a review on it like a year ago. Well, that old review was trash. It was like so trash that I just decided to make this the first movie I did a re-review on. Because here's the thing, I criticized the movie for being boring, mean spirited, and some other stuff, and I only gave it an 8 out of 10. Well, I watched the movie again just the other night, so I figured I might as well fix the damage that I caused with my old review. So, without further ado, this is my review of Forrest Gump. Starting off with the story, it's one of the best, most classic, most beloved stories that there is out there. Take a look through Forrest's entire life. And then, at the end, making it actually in the present instead of all just the look to the past it was a pretty interesting role. It turned out great, and I really enjoyed the, the part with the army force going to all these, like, um, you know, like the well known events, like seeing JFK and, like, Lyndon Johnson and all kinds of stuff, and him playing football. Him playing ping pong, you know, just everything was just great. I also forgot to mention when he's being a shrimp boat captain, and then at the end when his lieutenant joins him as his first mate, and that was just that was just amazing. I loved that part. I thought it was really good. There's no doubt that this kind of storytelling deserves a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, you know what, maybe they have some constructive feedback for the film that, or something that I never noticed. So let's check out a few of the reviews. So afraid to dredge up debate that when Forrest is handed a mic at an anti-war rally, someone unplugs the speaker so we can't hear him. Fitting for a movie with nothing to say. Top critic? What? That? Wow. Just wow. Okay, let's look at another one. Gets my vote for the most offensive, morally repugnant film ever made. Zero out of five? How come critics are even allowed to give zero out of five? Like, and for Forrest Gump? Like, why? Why? That's just, that's so dumb. Like, they should be wasting that on the Emoji Movie or something. Not a classic film like this. Jeez, I might as well just make a rant on all these horrible reviews. But going back to the movie, I can see how some people think that it could be offensive of portraying Forrest as dumb. But personally, I didn't really mind it that much. Like, yeah, I mean, sometimes he, like, did stuff and then people got angry at him. But, like, you know, Jenny says it herself. He can't really help it that much. It's not really his fault, so. And, like, that was one of my big problems with my older view, that, like, I was just, like, saying that Jenny was a bad character because she yelled at Forrest. But, like, she kind of, she kind of had the right to do that. And I never really realized that before. But there is one thing that nobody can deny. The acting performances and how great they are. Like, Tom Hanks is just, he's perfect. He just does such a good job. Everybody does great. Everyone really gives it their all. And it just, it turned out so amazingly that just, the only other film I can think of that has this good of acting performances is Titanic. And I only saw half of that movie. It's for sure that the acting performances in this movie are a lot better than what you would get with the Emoji movie. <laughs> My favorite acting performance out of, outside of Forrest Gump would actually probably be Lieutenant Dan. I think Forrest and Lieutenant Dan were such well-written characters, and they're just their screenplay together is just so great. Like the scene where Forrest is, um, he's he's in the army and like there's like bombers going off and he's just running back like grabbing everyone and just trying to save them. And then he grabs Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan's just like, 
He doesn't want to get saved since he wants to die with honor to continue the tradition of his family. But Forrest being Forrest, he like, he just goes out and grabs Lieutenant Dan. Dan just keeps saying like, dude, don't, don't save me. I want to die with honor. And like, that, yeah, and then Forrest just saves him anyways. And then Dan, he just really doesn't really appreciate it. But then later on, they're on the shrimp boat together since, you know, Dan was like, promised to be Forrest's first mate if he ever got into the shrimping business, and he, um, he's like, hey Forrest, I, I realized I never thanked you for saving my life, and then he just jumps off the boat, I don't really know why he did it, but, yeah, just, Lieutenant Dan, he's just, he's just great, and I loved every moment that he was on screen. So yeah, now that I kind of got started talking about the actual characters themselves, now I might as well actually talk about, like, everyone else, like, Forrest's mom, like, she's magical. Yeah, Sally Field just does a good, she does a great job performing as Forrest's mom, and she was awesome. Then Jenny is another awesome character, like, I mean, all the characters in here are great, but she's one of my personal favorite, besides Forrest and Lieutenant Dan. So, yeah, she's just, like, kind of on a drug trip in the 60s and the 70s, and just, yeah, a few points she actually tries to commit suicide, and then she remembers, like, Forrest and, like, all kinds of other things that that she should just, like, live anyways, and so she does, and then they actually end up getting married at the end of the film, and then Jenny gets, like, diagnosed with, like, some sickness, and then, yeah. Um... I'm not going to go any farther with that, because you remember how I want to wreck, I, know, I mentioned that it was the first time I saw that scene, so yeah, I'm not really going to mention that any further, but yeah, she leaves, she leaves Forrest with a son, who's also named Forrest, and it's just a beautiful moment, the part where Forrest is by her gravestone, then he's just reading off what he's been doing with his son. Just the scene where Forrest finds out that he was the dad is just so. It, it was just a happy moment. So yeah, he's just like, "Hey, Jenny, where? Who's the dad?" Or like, she's just like, "Hey, this is Forrest, my son. I named him after his dad." And then Forrest is like. Who was the dad? And she's like, you're the dad. And he's just like... And then there was Boa, Forrest's best good friend. And they became awesome friends during the war. And they were planning to open a shrimping business together, Boa Gump Shrimp. And unfortunately, only Forrest was able to open it. Because Boa died. I also loved all the cameos by... People like Richard Nixon, Elvis Presley, Lyndon B. Johnson, and John F. Kennedy. And they just helped make the movie even better. Yeah, I know I mentioned in my last review that Forrest Gump was a classic movie. But this time I think it's even more so. After re-reviewing this film, I'm glad to say that I enjoyed it even more the second time. And I thought it was one of the best films I've seen now all I have to do is watch Titanic and Saving Private Ryan, and I can cross two more films off my bucket list. So, I've never done this before, but I think this film deserves it. Hey guys, I know I, I bet a lot of people are going to say in my comments that I did give Miracles from Heaven a 10 out of 10 as well. Which I did, but looking back, I don't really think the film was quite good enough to deserve that kind of review and that kind of praise. Saying that Miracles from Heaven is better than Forrest Gump is kind of like saying that Dunkirk is better than Saving Private Ryan. And plus, I think in that one, I did give one category a 9 out of 10. Like, I give characters a 9 out of 10 or something. So, if I did, if I still did that, 
that animat review style, which I don't really do that anymore, but if I still did that style, I would have probably given all the categories a 10 out of 10 for this one. That's all I have to say about that.